Several representatives of the Lakeland Board of Trustees and Interim President Dan Eck held an open forum to discuss leadership changes with students on April 2nd at 12 p.m. in the Bradley Building. Uh, we messed up on the scheduling of this, or is there, do you think there's a reason why there's not as many students at this? There's probably about a fourth as many students here as there were before. Uh, my name's Bob Meltzer. I'm a uh, trustee. Actually, I'm the chairman of the board of trustees, chairperson of the board of trustees. Uh, I'm from Sheboygan, and I've been involved in the affairs of Lakeland College for uh, 40 or so years. Uh, I'm Pete Bemis. I'm local. I live about five miles uh, from here in, uh, in the country. Uh, I've been with Lakeland on board for about 40 years. Actually, well, 39, 40, something like that. Um, and my son is a graduate of Lakeland in chemistry, and my daughter is about to uh, graduate uh, this year from Lakeland as well. So, I'm Dave Michael. I'm from Madison. I'm a retired United Church of Christ pastor. I graduated from Lakeland in 1963, and um, <clears throat> we studied a lot by candlelight back then, but uh, electricity came along later, but still got a good education. Good afternoon, my name is Mike Bogenschutz. Uh, I've been on the board for about five or six years. I'm also local, live just a few miles from here. Um, my name is John McFadden, I live in Appleton. I've been on the board a bit more than 20 years. Uh, also a UCC clergyman, and I initially agreed to do a single term on the board representing the Wisconsin Conference of the United Church of Christ. Fell in love with the place and never left. I currently chair the Academic and Student Affairs Committee. Good afternoon, I'm Barbara Gannon. I live in Plymouth. I've been on the board for nine years, and I chair the Marketing and Development Committee. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Perhaps I should begin by giving a, a little oversight of what a board of directors or board of trustees uh, uh, is. That it is a group that is charged with the responsibility of providing the oversight to an organization, whether it's uh, a college or a, or a museum or whatever. That uh, it's it's an or, it's a group that provides the long-term oversight. Uh, for the operation of that particular organization, and it represents uh, all of the stakeholders. In the past month, we've had uh, a change of leadership, and there are some people that think that this is a change that came about quite suddenly. Actually, that's not the case, that uh, this is an evolutionary process that took place uh, starting with Dr. Gould's announcement that he was going to retire. With that announcement, we formed search committees. And through that process, we came to the conclusion and the recommendation to the Board of Trustees that Michael Grandello be elected as the 15th president of Lakeland College. Uh, the chairman, Jeff Adam, Bill Sheldon, who's also a trustee, and myself, who were a subcommittee of the search committee that were charged with the responsibility of helping to integrate uh, and involve Dr. Grandillo in the school and the community. We took a very active role in trying to help him understand the background of the school and the future direction of the school. And in that responsibility, the three of us would meet periodically with Dr. Grandillo. The three of us would meet with various uh, constituents on the uh, campus, whether it be students or staff or faculty, and we got to know more and more about Dr. Grandilla, more than more, we learned more during that process than we did actually in the formal search process before he was hired. In that phase, if you will, of learning more about Dr. Grandillo and his concepts of the future and his leadership, we became more and more concerned that there was not an alignment about what his thoughts and future might be and in terms of what we thought the future uh, hold, held or holds for Lakeland. We had the articles, philosophies didn't work, it collided, we understand that part. Why wasn't the scene before? I know one of you guys said you're on this, this committee that went across the nation to find somebody. I think 
that we that you met with him multiple times. I think you should have been or had at least a view of where he was standing at, how fast he wanted to make changes, and why it wasn't the scene before. Why did why did we go with him and now nine months later now he's gone? Yeah, it's a good question, and uh, you know, I come from a corporate world where hiring is, is a big deal. You know, you're hiring a lot of people, and it's a very tough process. It's a process that, as good as you want to be at it, and the resources you spend at it, the help that you try to get with it with consultants or hiring agencies, it still is not a perfect process. And in this case, we engaged the services of a presidential college presidential search firm. That's what they specialize in. So we. we Paid them a lot of money to help us to generate um, uh, applications for the process. You know, we're, we got a lot of applications from across the country, like you said. Uh, but the problem is, it's a process that you're looking at resumes, you're looking at things on paper. Then you try to narrow it down and you start interviewing people. But when you interview people, just because of the sheer number of people involved from both sides, it's a very small amount of time you're spending with people. You narrow it down even further until you get down to your two or three candidates and then you try to spend more time. They come on campus, they meet with student or faculty groups, those type of things, as well as the board. And you, you, know, you have a dinner and things like that, but the, the fact remains, it's still a very small amount of time that you're looking at someone and trying to gauge character, leadership style, um, communication style, all those type of things that are not easy to it. Access or assess off of a resume. You know, we were looking for someone uh, for the right qualifications, and we thought we had it, uh, but there just was not that mesh that we were hoping for. Uh, Dr. Grandillo's style seemed to be like he wanted to move quickly, and a board doesn't necessarily want to move quickly. After everything that you went through to interview Dr. Grandillo, I think you even said that it was a unanimous decision to select him. Do you think that he maybe had reason to think that he had to move quickly? Is there something that he maybe saw that said, there's some things here that maybe we maybe need to fix pretty quickly? Has that occurred to anybody? Who would like to uh, respond to that one? I guess it's merely a, a, a um, different difference of perception that uh, the search committee, the board of trustees have been at the school for a long time. Uh, we have a sense of uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the school. We have an understanding of the future needs of the school. And in our analysis, we're not debating whether there is a need for improvement or a need for change. But in our estimation, we wanted to do this in a prudent fashion, as opposed to Dr. Grandello, who arrived at the scene, and he looked at the facts, and he reached a conclusion that there was a need for quick uh, action, and in his mind, he came up with the expression of being nimble, quick, and entrepreneurial. We're not against being nimble, we're not against being quick, we're not against being entrepreneurial, but we want to do it in a proper fashion, and in our judgment, based on what we know about education, about the school, about the local community. Uh, being that you guys couldn't align, let's say because Dr. Grinello was moving too fast, was it really necessary for him to resign in the middle of the academic period? Why was it like right now? Why couldn't it have been after graduation in the summer time when it could uh, transition more easily? Where you were, you know, you got the students here all over like coming back from spring break, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, it was a shock. Why couldn't this wait for it to transition a little better? I think, uh, you know, there comes a point when both sides just realize that it's not working. And I can't speak for Dr. Grandillo, but the perception that I have is, you know, we both just realized it wasn't working and we've had a lot of meetings like this. Like we were saying, we had a three-person team that met with him on a very regular basis. And in those discussions, it was just evident that it wasn't working. And when you reach that point where both sides know it, 
it doesn't really do any good to, for the sake of appearances, just to carry it out. I just feel that, you know, yeah, I, uh, yeah, why stick around, why leave? But when you come, you kind of hold it out when you're there for the button. Do you kind of understand what I'm saying? I, I understand, I fully understand what you're saying. In an ideal world, you know, that, that'd be great, but uh, unfortunately, you know, you're dealing with people and wants and desires, and ideally that would have been the best, but it didn't work that way. And then this board. I think the decision was made with the best interests of students in the college at heart for both Dr. Grandillo and the board to have those discussions and to make that decision. Like you guys had asked, what, are you going to learn from things that we didn't do well last time? We ask you to learn from things that you don't do well, whether it's academically or socially. What I learned is that it's great to have a couple of students on the strategic planning committee that's valuable. It's great to have a few students um, at times when the board members are on campus to interact with board members. But I learned that you want more transparency. The way to do that is through your student government, through student, student associations. So whether you have interest in running for one of those executive positions and the call for nominations went out before the end of the day tomorrow, we'll have a little extra time that we can extend that through the rest of the week. Some very honest words from Vice President for Student Development, Nate Daney, right there. And this has been Leah Yulatowski for the Lakeland Mirror reporting.